<laughs> All right. So uh, there's a lot of lists of pre-assault cues. These are mine. Palm pepper spray is next generation OC spray. It's hot, hot at 1.4% major capsaicinoids. And its modular design means you can customize it exactly to you. Three different setups, lots of different color combinations. You can make it exactly as you like. And the flip top safety prevents accidental discharges. It's 10 to 12 foot range and 25 half second blasts. Make sure that you can keep that long range eye poke at long range. I trust Palm OC and I recommend it for everyone for self-defense. Uh, these are stuff I have observed and they're very similar to other people's lists because go figure, there's a lot of overlap. None of these are like a, hey, I'm 100% sure that person's gonna assault me. But again, the more of these, the worse. And especially if you're collecting these on the way in. So common ones, uh, and by the way, if you're in South America anywhere, uh, that would be a pre-assault cue is somebody riding a motorcycle on the sidewalk or bumping up behind you on, on one. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, just go ahead and assume that person's about to rob you. Uh, but in North America, um, in general, Abrupt committed movement, so you'll see this on, a, I call it on a mission. You'll see people coming across a, a, a gas station parking lot or something like, man, they're going somewhere. Could just be going to the bathroom, but again, watch where that person's going. And if they're marching out to, you know, towards you at a pump and you're the only car out there, bad, bad things are coming probably. Uh, grooming and jitters, uh, you will see this a lot where uh, people will start touching, especially face, beard, back and neck, stuff like that. Um, or sometimes it's like a high school locker room before a game, man. You'll see people psyching themselves up and kind of doing one thing. It's been so obvious sometimes as a dude taking off his shirt, walking across the parking lot to go have a fight. And what do we do when we see weird social behavior? We dehumanize because our brains, it's uncomfortable. Our brains go, this is weird. And whether you want it to or not, in the back of your head, your brain's going, ah, it's probably nothing. Ah, he's probably just going somewhere. We make excuses, just like Steph talked about. So the point is, resist that and go, yeah, okay, brain, it might be, but where's that guy going right now? Blocking or hiding hands, obviously this is a pretty obvious one, right? If you can't see hands, that's what's gonna get you killed. Uh, Force Science has done a lot of eye tracking studies and one of the biggest differences between uh, younger officers who are inexperienced and get killed quick in simulations and more experienced officers is where they're looking, when, and for how long. Uh, inexperienced officers tend to bounce their gaze around all, they're trying to look at everything, right? They're trying to aware at everything around them. Whereas the more experienced officers know exactly what's gonna kill them and they're like, nope, I'm looking down here. And I've been called on it doing interviews with, with felons in the field and in their houses and stuff for years and years and years. I've had dozens of people be like, why do you never look at me? And what they mean is, why don't you look at me in the eyes? And I make an excuse, you know. Ah, it's just a thing I do. Sorry, man, it's just a weird thing. The actual answer is because your eyes aren't going to kill me, right? I'm worried about where your hands are. That's what's going to kill me. Um, staring or dehumanizing gaze. Uh, sometimes you'll get the look up and down like you're a piece of meat, right? Um, that's never good, <laughs> male or female. Um, the dehumanizing gaze can also, or the, the, the staring can also be if you ask someone a question or something, like they're coming up, hey, you got a cigarette? And you're like, nah, man, I don't want to, or whatever. Or you're like, hey, man, uh, you know, can, can you back up for me? And they just go like, back up? Yeah. That's a bad sign. Like if they're looking off into the distance and kind of whatever, whatever they were thinking about is not what you just talked to them about and bad things are about to happen. Uh, so watch out for that. Glancing, especially at valuables or escape routes, right? So when we talk to people, uh, it is weird for someone who just wants to ask for jumper cables to come up to you and be like, hey man, uh, do you got any uh, jumper cables? Why would I look behind me? Because I'm looking for who's watching and I'm looking for escape routes and I'm double checking on this. Now, if you take John Correa's classes, he'll talk about how that might be in a timing advantage if you're quick enough, but you gotta be waiting for it. And at that point, if they're just asking for jumper cables, you're gonna shoot that guy in the head when he turns back for doing that? No, you're not, right? So there's some limitations on that, but it is definitely a weird, weird thing to see. Um, or glancing at your valuables, right? Somebody comes up and they glance at a, at a bracelet or something like that, or a watch they want real quick. Again, the little micro expressions are telling you something, pay attention. Now, I know that's kind of a lot, um, oh, and sorry, bladed or awkward stance as well. So normally when we talk to people, if I'm gonna come up to somebody who 
I don't want to scare in the parking lot uh, and ask for jumper cables, right? I'm gonna get down on their level. I'm gonna get like that. I'm gonna be like, hey, I am so sorry to ask you, know, ask you this. I know it's weird. Do you have jumper cables, right? Is this a good way to start a fight? No, this is a terrible way to start a fight, right? So if I'm gonna start a fight, and that's what I'm thinking about, I will probably tend to, and if I'm really good, I'll pair it with the glance, right? So I'll come in and I'll be like, hey, uh, you know, ah, my car won't start. Um, I, do you and what have I just done? I paired it with a story, a little bit of an interview. I turned and looked to make sure nobody was watching, and I just left my foot behind in a stance where I can start to throw a punch. And a lot of times it'll come right after the look away, right? It'll be, ah, oh, it's casual, sucker punch kind of thing. So what I recommend people do is get in the habit of, uh, this one really screws with you, uh, is if people start looking away from you in context like that, just take a big step. <laughs> so when they turn back, you're not exactly where they were. Because again, it's funny. You'll see them kind of casually look back and they're like, oh. And that might deselect you right there. Because honestly, that jolt out of like, oh crap, this person did something weird that I wasn't expecting. Um, they still have an opportunity to deselect, right? Uh, and they can pass it off. Oh, oh, sorry, man, didn't mean to bother you. And I've actually had this happen at gas stations where I had a dude walking towards me at like 5 a.m., middle of nowhere, I'm the only car out there, and he's marching towards me, and he literally maneuvers so he hides himself behind the pillar that was there. And I'm sitting there pumping gas, and I'm like, could be nothing, but meh. Yeah. And so I just moved and kind of went around the other side of my car and stood there and waited because my gas can fill itself. And I kid you not, the dude popped out right next to where I had been standing from behind the pillar, and this was the conversation. He goes, ah, oh, oh, sorry, man. <laughs> and I'm like, have a good day. You know, like, but what can I do, right? I don't have proof of anything, but I was like, whoa, that was weird. Um, yeah. Uh, waistband picking and reaching, that's real obvious. You guys have seen that in videos, stuff like that, but bad guys do that all the time. Touch things they're not thinking about, things like that, or they are thinking about. All right, so all of those are bad. The more you see, the worse. 